Paul Marsh on Express FM and I am delighted to be joined on a Zoom call by the very beautiful and the very talented Kezia Gill. Kezia, how are you doing? I do very well, all the better for the lovely introduction, thank you. <laughs> Nobody introduces me like that and I just can't figure out why. <laughs> you need to stop doing the interviewing, you see. Uh, right, so the last time we spoke, uh, you had just released Like I Did Before and you were just about to play Southampton on your sold-out UK tour. I was there, what a night it was and what a tour it was. I know, and do you know what? I loved that venue because I got to do my epic wrestler walk-in. <laughs> Because it, it, some venues have um, stage access and a couple didn't. And I know Southampton was one, so I had to kind of come from the back of the room. And it was like this this really egotistical moment where I was like, the crowds will part and let me through. No, <laughs> it's no. Like so no, it's the complete opposite with the English crowd. It's, who's trying to bump in front of me? Oh, it's Kezia. Oh, hello. <laughs> the look on people's faces when they were like, who's pushing to the front? Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> Stop singing. I'm trying to hear the main act. It was it was quite an enjoyable process. I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> really, really good. So, how does it feel to have a sold out UK tour under your belt? Oh, I I still haven't a pinch myself. I mean, when when I was first sort of planning the tour, um, I it, it was really small venues, really intimate venues, and this is where working with a team of people really came into play because they were all like, "Look, you're not thinking big enough. We need to book." these kind of venues and I was like look guys it's going to be really embarrassing when I don't sell enough tickets I don't make enough money to even pay my musicians and they were all like look you got to believe in yourself a bit more but I was just so reluctant because I was you know it's a lot at risk there's a lot of finance there's a lot of you know you put your name on the line and I was just like is this is this too big and then not only did it sell like so well like better than I could have thought but we had to add dates um so I, it's still kind of sinking in the, the tour was emotionally and physically incredible it was draining um but I look back now with this kind of like this this relief this peace it's like I did that I actually did that and it's what the, the mad thing is 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 already people are like right let's talk about the next one yeah, let's think yeah. and I'm like no can I can I just let can me I just bathe cuddle, in this let me just cuddle this baby for a yeah. little bit longer um because I'm just so proud of what we all did and I say we it was such a team effort like a real collective effort um and I just I, yeah I still kind of can't believe we did it <laughs> now if it's possible I want you to answer this next question with one word okay so when I last spoke to you at Southampton uh in a few days time you were going to head off to Dublin you Brian and everybody else were, were going to Dublin to do your show there one word answer how was it <laughs> expensive <laughs> It was, I'm trying to put it into one word, but it felt like closure. Okay. In a, in a weird way, because it wasn't a big full band show. We didn't have the full band. We didn't have the full team. And I feel like the real kind of rap show was London. That's where we had all the band and we had drinks after. And Dublin for me was just like my own personal closure. I'm from Irish heritage. It's where it all began. And in, and in a weird way, the nice, smaller, more intimate close for me was like, well done. You've come a long way. This is where it all started with Irish heritage, with Irish music. And yes, it's a smaller room. Yes, it's just a girl with a guitar. But that's where it all started. And it was a lovely way to close the tour. But um, but yeah, very expensive as well. I mean, 11 <laughs> euros for a whiskey. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. So since the tour, um, you you haven't been sat back enjoying it. You have still been just doing loads of stuff. Um, so TV appearances, cruises, <laughs> and now you're going to embark on another tour. I know. I, I'm a sucker for punishment. What can I say? <laughs> how how did the TV appearance come about? So it was. It was crazy. I've over the years, I've I've sort of dipped my toe in the kind of reality TV pool. Uh, obviously, talent shows in general. So The Voice, The X Factor, Britain's Got Talent. And despite auditioning like relentlessly for years and years, I've never actually got on the shows for whatever reasons they are. Never quite done it. But the producers get to know you, and you kind of go into a database of, oh, we've got this new show coming. Would you would you be interested? And that's just what happened. Um, I got um, contacted. They were looking for singers for a, a new show because when I first filmed this series one hadn't even been out, so the okay. whole show was 
it was filmed like a good year and a half before my actual episode aired. Oh, but wow, didn't know okay. Much about it. Yeah, I didn't know much about it. I was just told, look, it's a bit of exposure, Saturday night TV, BBC, and all you need to do is be able to sing. And I was like, well, okay, tick. Um, but then I loved the concept that I would actually be miming, obviously miming to my own voice. And I always wondered, do I look like my voice? Do I look mm-hmm. like a singer? Um, and it turns out, no, because <laughs> they all <laughs> thought I was miming. And it was just so much fun. And it came out at the perfect time because we were just about to go out on tour and my episode aired. Um, and it gave me a real little profile boost. I think it's had over 2 million views on wow. TikTok. So something crazy like that so it was a nice little you know a nice little boost um and and you know to have paddy mcginnis call me a sensational singer well that, that's that's bucket list material take it, it off take it off the list i dread to ask people what they think i look like because i, I don't <laughs> think i i don't think i'd like the answer i got right just very very quickly um we are going to mention this I and mean, i'm only going to talk about it quickly because you're not coming anywhere near us down in portsmouth uh you are heading out on tour again uh, it's an all un, oh, sorry i can't get my words out it's an all girl tour it is. And it's just, it's me and three of my best friends, Jade Helliwell, Jess Thriston and Demi Mariner. And we've been friends for years. We've been talking about it for years. And we just thought, I said, well, look, we've all written together. We all love to sing together. We all love to hang together. So let's just charge people to join us. <laughs> and you said to yourselves, let's take the show to Portsmouth. And then somebody said, well, to be fair, there's not a venue big enough in Portsmouth to hold all it. the people that would want to come and see us. <laughs> that was how the conversation went. Yeah. It was because we only, we only wanted to do a limited run. Um, we knew we only wanted to do sort of like four or five dates. Um, so naturally you hit the big cities. We hit London, we hit Glasgow, you know, and then we were quite surprised at the demand. So a few were added. Newcastle was added and we added Leeds. Um, but as as we're all Midlands girls, a, yeah. a huge chunk of our of our fan base is up is up here in the middle and, and sort of touching on the north. But, you know, we're hitting Glasgow, we're hitting London. We're, we, unfortunately, we can't go much higher or lower without it spanning out over the time period. Yeah. But, yeah, we're, hopefully people will, will come along and travel if, if they want to see us. Yeah, well, London's not a million miles away. I'm sure you'll have a few, uh, a few people travelling up there from the south. Right, we have been waffling on about how great you are for quite some time. So <laughs> why don't we play a track? Now, hang on, why don't we play your new track, whiskey over ice and then when we come back we can talk a little bit about it sounds good that was kezia gill with whiskey over ice her brand new single that is coming out on the 3rd of february now kezia i'm joined by kezia on a zoom call uh, kezia the last time we spoke you just released like i did before uh, and it was a much it was a softer piano ballad and i compared it to an adele track uh, you know very very nice very very soft this isn't that at all, is it? <laughs> it's not. And do you know what? It is. This is what I mean when I say to people, you can't put me in a genre, you can't put me in a box, because I, it, I really do never know what's coming next. And I like to just write what I want, what I'm feeling. Um, and this song in particular is interesting because it was never a song meant for me. It was actually a library song, which means it was meant to be pitched for, for film and TV. Um, I was sent the music by my producer who says, you know, let's just go for a big country banger on this one. Started writing and I was like, actually, this is kind of, this is my vibe. And I sort of said to him, look, this is the chorus. Um, I feel like it's a Kezi Gill song. Can I keep it? And he was like, you have to keep it. This has got you all over it. Uh, so, yeah, it was kind of a, a very happy accident. It's it's brilliant. I played it last week on the show. Uh, it got a fantastic response. I'm I'm sure as we're talking now, it's getting a good response as well. <laughs> it really is a great great track. And to make it even more personal to me, it's about whiskey. Well, obviously, I mean, write about what you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm I've been very public. My actual tipple of choice is is whiskey with a dash of lemonade. But we have some really lovely bottles of whiskey and I've been told many a time that I can't spoil it with lemonade. So I've become quite accustomed to, to whiskey over ice, actually, just a special occasion or you know, at the end of a night to celebrate a, a nice show or, or a good day's work. Um, yeah, a little whiskey over ice goes down very nicely. Well, what I will say is some of the, uh, uh, how can we put it, more popular mainstream brands of whiskey will probably go well with Coke or lemonade. If you get a nicer yeah. whiskey, if you get a real nice one, a, a nice single uh, uh, cube of ice is perfect with it. Yeah, 
And that's it. I mean, I always used to just say, oh, whiskey and lemonade. And everyone would say to me, look, you're not drinking the right whiskey if you need lemonade. Yeah. With it. And I've kind of been educated, which is great. And um, actually, when we were in Dublin, we brought back some beautiful bottles, um, one particularly called Writer's Tears, which just struck a chord. And um, yeah, that's beautiful over a cube of ice for sure. Uh, so featuring a uh, longtime friend, Luke Thomas, on the guitar. Yeah, I mean, it was brilliant because the original music that was sent to me wasn't particularly country. It just had that kind of anthemic sound. Um, and I was like, look, this is just going one way and it needs it needs to be big. It needs to, it needs some amazing country licks on it. And when it comes to guitar playing, in my opinion, there's not really anyone better. It's really useful that we're good friends. So I can just send them a WhatsApp and be like, mate, do me some guitar. <laughs> And, and he, he he delivers every time. He never fails. And his guitar in is just awesome on this track. Let's not talk him up too much. We don't want to get him to get... He doesn't want to get a big head, does he? <laughs> um, so, yeah, the track is coming out on the 3rd of February. So that's two tracks coming. We've had one. Yeah. The next one is coming. So you know what yeah. you know what we need next, don't you? What's that? We need an album. <laughs> well, funny you should say <sighs> that. <laughs> The album is coming. It is coming. Um, I can't tell you the date yet, but we are basically going to drip feed you the first few singles, which is basically what, what we're doing here. So in a short succession of time, you're going to get a drip feed of, of, of say maybe four or five of the singles. And then we're just going to slap the album in front of you. And it, we're aiming for late summer. Uh, the production is pretty much finished now. We're just wrapping up with the final mixes. Um, and I'm just so excited. I mean, to be sat here in January knowing I've got to wait till the summer is just mm. horrendous because I'm so excited. I want to get it all out there. But we have a plan. And uh, yeah, we're going to drip feed this one. But you need to give the fans time to learn all the lyrics so that when you do the summer festivals, they can sing every word back to you. Well, that's it. And I just think as well with the way that modern music is brought out if you just just bring out an album with 10 songs it's almost a bit like overwhelming um you know some of them might get missed you can only play so many on the radio or or pitch for for playlisting on apple and spotify and all these other modern things so i think doing it sort of like drip feed and single by single it gives each song its little moment in the sun or most of them anyway and then there's some songs that are specifically there to be album tracks slightly more maybe indulgent lyrically um slightly longer slightly more off the wall shall we say <laughs> but doing an album allows me to do that whereas in you're a little bit more restricted with singles because you're you're always looking for the golden nugget which yeah. is radio play yeah. and playlisting with an album, you can just be a bit more bonkers, and I'm here for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so we need to wrap up the interview, but I've, I've just got uh, one more, a couple more things to say. I forgot to mention it earlier, but congratulations on making the main stage for Country to Country up in Glasgow, because that is Thank absolutely amazing. But now this is going to disappoint me, I think, this answer. Does that mean <laughs> that you're not playing London? Well, I, you know, watch this space. There's three cities, there's three days, and I've only announced one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, please, 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 because I'm there. This is going to be my first time there for the whole weekend. Usually I do a day or two, but this year we've got tickets for the whole weekend. Just keep those fingers crossed, Paul. <laughs> <sighs> oh, you've made me a very, very happy man, Kezia. <laughs> <laughs> Kezia, thank you so much for talking to us. I really do appreciate it. And again, Kezia's new single, Whiskey Over Ice, is out. And you can stream it and buy it, of course, from the 3rd of February. Thank you so much. <laughs>